In this tutorial, we're going to talk about stacks and queues, which conceptually are pretty easy. So the first thing that you need to understand about stacks and queues is that they're not really a data structure in the traditional sense. It's really more of an enforcement of policy. Stacks and queues can be implemented using some other kind of data structure, like an array or a linked list, and they can store just about any kind of data, a lot like the list class that we've been working with. Now queues are going to enforce the policy of first in, first out, which we call FIFO, and it's a lot like waiting in a line. The first person in the line is the first person to get service. Stacks, on the other hand, are first in, last out, or philo, and it's a lot like a stack of trays at your favorite all-you-can-hold-down buffet. So if we focus in on the stack, there are really three primary operations. There's the push method, where we're putting new data on the top of the stack. There's the pop method, where we're removing data from the top of the stack. And then there's the peak method, where we get a copy of the data on the top of the stack, but it doesn't remove it. Stacks are really useful kinds of things. In fact, we already talked about stacks when we talked about recursion. They're also really useful in games. You could have a stack of cards, or a stack of tiles, or a stack of loot, and so on. All right, so if we were to visualize what's going on, you can see that we pushed the value 5 onto the stack. Now realize it may look like we implemented this using an array, but we could also use a linked list. We could then push any amount of data onto the stack. So after doing that a couple of times, you can see that we have four integers on the stack. Now if we were to do a peak operation at this point, would actually return us a 45, but notice that the 45 remains on the top of the stack. If we were to do a pop operation, it would actually remove that 45 from the top of the stack. And we could push and pop any number of times, but notice that when we get down to the last element, that this was the first element that we put onto the stack. Therefore, we're going to say that stacks are first in, last out. Now, queues, on the other hand, have two primary operations. There's in queue, where you're putting new data at the end of the queue, and then there's DQ, where you're removing data from the beginning of the queue. Now, sometimes people call this DEC, but I'm going to say DQ. Also realize that we do have a peak method, and it's there in case you want to use it. Now, queues are really good for enforcing fairness, and a good example of this would be the waitlist at SPSU. In gaming, you could use it for any number of things, including player turns during a round. So here's an example of how we might use a queue. We could enqueue the value 5. And then immediately after that, we might enqueue the value 11. And then we could enqueue another arbitrary value like a negative 6. Now, what's going to happen when we call DQ on this queue? Well, as you suspect, we're going to remove the 5 from the front of the list. And therefore, you can see that this really is a first in, first out policy. And because we've removed this 5, the 11 is now at the beginning of the queue. If we were to do another DQ, we would then remove the 11. So that's it for stacks and queues. Like I said before, they're pretty easy to work with. However, realize that they're not data structures like we've been studying before, like a linked list or an array. All these things are is really just an enforcement of policy. The thing that you need to remember is that queues are first in, first out, and stacks are first in, last out. So here's my question for you. Which data structure is last in, last out? And which one is last in, first out? Well, while you're figuring that out, let's go do some code.